Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. How's it going? This week I'm inside my apartment in New York City. My lab is currently closed as it probably should be considering what's going on, but that doesn't stop me from being eager to see some of my images that I've shot recently. So I thought why not revisit my old ways of developing and scanning film at home. Try that again, make a little vlog out of it. It feels like it was probably almost a year ago at this point since I last developed or scanned any of my film at home. I'll explain more later about why I haven't done that and there's a couple different reasons, but I thought it'd be pretty fun while I'm inside anyway and I have some undeveloped film to try and revisit those old ways, develop it here at home in my kitchen and also revisit those old scanning methods, take out the Epson V600 and try out some of the new software that has come out recently, which I think will probably eliminate some of those frustrations that I had in the beginning when I was scanning at home. I think this will be more of a vlog rather than a tutorial. So if you're hoping to learn how to develop and scan at home, I have some old videos or there's some great videos by my friends like Matt Day out there that you should probably check out. But that's that. I'm updating my computer right now for the new Epson software. And I think I'm gonna get set up with some developing equipment. I'm gonna look through what I have and then order the rest of the stuff that I need online. So here's kind of what I have already. I haven't opened this drawer in probably a year at this point, but I know it's in here. Um, I have old developing bottles, which I will be replacing. You'll see that in a second. Um, this is the main thing I'm looking for. This is the Jobo processing tank. I think this does two rolls of 120 at a time, which is exactly what I need because I have two rolls that I'm willing to experiment on and see if I screwed them up. So this is gonna do that. It has a lid, obviously. I have this old thermometer, but it's pretty rusty inside and it definitely got a lot of water in here. So I'm not gonna trust this one anymore. I'm gonna need this measuring cup. Here's the reels. So here's what a spool looks like. Pretty much the way these work is that you can set them up as 35 reels, or if you twist them this way, you can set them up as medium format reels. So that's what that looks like in medium format. This tank can hold two of these. I think for me, this was always kind of like a really fun part of the process. I miss um, just the tactility and the satisfaction of going out shooting, then coming back and developing and scanning the images right away. So when it comes to the stuff that I already have, I obviously will be scanning the work myself as well. I will eventually print it in the dark room if I like anything but I'm gonna try to make a quick scan. And that's where this thing comes in, which is my old Epson V600. It's sitting under some photo books. We got Joel Mayerowitz, we got Larry Sultan, and Mark Steinmet. So this is an Epson, it's a flatbed scanner. It does some uh, medium format scanning. So I think what I will be doing is actually trying some of the new software because ever since I made my first video, about scanning on this Epson scanner, a lot of new software has come out, which is really exciting to see that there's still new innovations in film technologies. Obviously gonna be developing some Portra 400. Got my two rolls right here. So I think that's pretty much everything that I already had. I picked up some new stuff as well, which I'll show you right now. So here's pretty much everything new that I ordered. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in here. I'll go through it real quick so you can kind of get an idea of what materials I'm using. This is from B and H. And first thing I picked up was three of these glass chemical bottles. They hold a liter each. And these bottles are nice because they're dark enough to where it protects your chemicals from the light and they're made specifically for storing this kind of stuff. So if you are planning to reuse your chemicals, I'd get a bottle like this. Anyway, these are gonna be sitting in a bath of hot water to warm up the chemicals. So the glass is definitely nice. The next thing is the developer. I bought two packs of developer in case I mess one up or I end up loving it and I wanna develop some more. I'm using a pretty basic powdered C41 kit. So the reason I like using this brand is because the chemicals don't really deplete every time you develop film. So if you do want to reuse the chemistry, you don't have to add 
time every time you develop, which can get a little bit confusing and stressful. So I really like this kit for that reason. I'll have it linked below if you want to check it out. But there's some more stuff in here. Um, I got a new thermometer. You really need to be precise with your temperatures when you develop this kind of stuff. So a new thermometer is pretty accurate because my old one's all rusted up. Gaff tape, that's not even relevant to this. I got a film squeegee. So what this does is it just helps you get rid of some of the water on your film, I guess, and it dries quicker. So I think I'm gonna get set up at my sink and load the film in the dark, obviously. Uh, pretty much ready to start mixing the chemicals in here. I'm gonna start with obviously packet number one, which is developer. Film is loaded up right here. Pretty much what's happening right now is just getting the temperature up on this and also making sure that the tank itself gets warm enough. So this is the developer stage. I'm just gonna fill this up, make sure I start my timer. And then I'm gonna agitate it. So this goes for three minutes and 30 seconds and you invert it every 30 seconds. Right now I'm doing the Blick stage, which is the bleach fix. This stops the development and fixes the film. I used to do this a lot. I used to develop pretty much all of my film and I stopped just for the sake of time. And now that I'm doing it again, I honestly wish I still did develop all my own film. You feel like you're part of the whole process of making the images, which to me is the most exciting thing about film itself and this whole developing thing is that you really feel like you made these pictures from start to finish. Here we go, this is the exciting part. Here in my bathroom hanging to dry are the negatives. They look pretty good, color on the border looks good. Looks a little weird on camera because of the white balance, but they look good. Let's chat quickly about a couple things that I think need to be said while my film is drying in my bathroom. I was slightly worried about messing up the developing part, but now that that's over, I'm gonna figure out how to scan again, which should be really interesting. I'm gonna take you guys along, and obviously at the end, you will see the photos that I shot. Here's something really fun that I haven't seen anybody on YouTube mention. I think the owner, or I think the creator of this app actually DM'd me, and that's how I found it, but it's an app called Film Lab, and what it allows you to do is kind of use your phone's camera as a preview for your negatives. Now obviously there's the trick where you invert your phone screen, but this app goes just a little bit further. It's a little bit smarter about how film works and the white balancing of film. And it also allows you to actually take the pictures. So here's me right now as a negative. You can see that it's a little bit smarter in adjusting the white balance and it actually works pretty good. So if you are impatient, like myself, I'll link that one in the App Store. I think my film is pretty much dry at this point. I think I'm gonna get my Epson set up at my desk, figure out the software, and then do some scanning. As you can tell, I am at my computer. I have Epson Scan 2 installed, and I have Negative Lab Pro installed. So Linus from Linus and his cameras did a really nice video about this whole setup. So that's kind of what I've been trying out because he seems like he's really got his home scanning down. So I'll have his video linked in the description. I feel like when I was scanning at home in the past, my colors were always off. The textures of the film were never right. So 
I'm excited to see if this setup changes that at all. So as you can see, I've taped down the negatives onto the flatbed. I was gonna use this Epson holder, but my negatives are a little bit bent from drying and this doesn't do a very good job of holding them flat. So that's how I'm doing it. I'm gonna start by just making my selections here. So let's make a scan of this. So now I'm dropping the scan into Lightroom and let's see how it goes. Um, considering what Matt Day has told me, I set the white balance there and then just crop in the negative. There we go, I'm gonna rotate it this way. Just gonna convert the negative. Let's see what happens. That's not terrible. Right away I actually kinda like that. I can change the brightness, wow. So now I can do some color balancing here the same way I would in Lightroom. Just looking at this, the whites look very blue, so I'm gonna go to the high section and maybe add in some yellow and a lot of magenta. That actually looks pretty nice. I um, feel like there's a little bit of a strange hue going on, especially in the whites. This does need some sharpening. There's definitely some weird digital looking textures going on as well, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I am quite impressed. I thought this would look a lot worse. So colors are pretty nice. Take out some of this dust too, because there is a crap ton. I'm not like the, the sky over here is very noisy. It's like a digital noise. It's not necessarily a film grain and I'm not a huge fan of that. You can even see it when the image is zoomed out this far, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. I think it does a decent job. So I think I'm gonna do a lot more scanning, try to finish all the negatives that I developed earlier, and then I'll check back in with you, kind of get some thoughts on all the photos, so. So it is now the next day. Last night I spent probably a good hour and a half working on scanning and converting those images to positives and then editing them to the final look. So here they are. I have to say I am really surprised with the results that I got on these because I definitely had some terrible experiences with Epson Scan in the past, but Epson Scan 2 is incredibly quick. I was very surprised just for scanning those negatives in. I feel like it was actually taking me longer to put the negatives on the bed of the scanner than it was taking for the scanner to make those images to digital files. So that's really impressive. I wasn't using any kind of low resolution or anything. I actually did 2400 DPI. They look awesome. So very impressed. Negative Lab Pro, I do have to do a lot more experimenting with, but right off the bat, I do think it does a really great job. I did have to do a lot of adjusting still after it converted those files, which is all right, that's to be expected, I think. But overall, I think it's a really impressive software. It's definitely the best home scanning software that I've tried to date. With night photos, it's definitely a lot harder to see if there's any weird color shifts because sometimes those just end up looking natural. Whereas with daytime photos, it is really difficult. The only daytime photo I scanned was this blue hour shot of a power plant in Ohio. And the colors here definitely aren't ideal. The blues look very shifted. And I tried as much as possible to correct them, but it just ended up being very grainy and mushy. And I think that's more so the limitations of the Epson scanner rather than Negative Lab Pro, but it is something to consider. I will be experimenting more with this process. I definitely won't be doing all of my work like this. Like I said, if you do wanna see a tutorial on this stuff, I'll have some valuable tutorials on developing and using Negative Lab Pro and things like that linked down below from some of my good friends. So those are worth checking out if you do wanna get into this yourself. This was more so a vlog. That definitely was a fun little experiment. I hope you enjoyed the video regardless of me just being stuck inside. Thanks for watching. And finally, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an incredible all-in-one website building platform that you can use to build your photography portfolio online. I've been using Squarespace at this point for at least three years and their incredibly customizable templates have made it so easy for me to get a custom unique portfolio up and running on the internet. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you can hit the link in my description for a 14 day free trial of Squarespace. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com Willem for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. 
just want to say thank you Squarespace for the continued support on this channel. Also, I want to say thank you to you for watching this video. It means a lot. You can check out my Instagram. It's at Willem Verb. I'll have it in the description. That's it for this video. Peace.